Hello and welcome to part three of our tab menu design series. In the last episode we've set up the menu itself to work with mouse and keyboard. But in this episode we're going to go through how to create the tab menu work with a controller using the left bumper and right bumper buttons. So let's get started. Okay, so last time we were here we set up our menu here for our mouse to work. But now we're going to work on getting our controller to use the left bumper and right bumper to navigate through these tabs. So this is why we had to make our own separate buttons that are separate from the normal button system. As we have to control uh, very harshly when they should look like they're active and when they're not. So let's go and look at our tab button. So at the moment our style is actually stored on the button uh, uh, widget inside of here. We're going to take the style out of there first of all and store it as a variable. So if we go to my graph and on the construct event, we're going to just get the button and we're going to get the style of that button. And then I'm going to split it open because I actually let's, let's do a break actually, let's break it open. Um, and then I'm going to store my normal and hovered as variables. So let's take that out. And promote that to a variable and then promote this to a variable. Okay. Now we have a reference to both the normal style and the hovered style. Then I'm going to make a two custom events. The first one is going to be called activate or active in uh, tab. The active tab. And when it's an active tab, what happens? Well, the first thing that happens is that we're going to be almost like we're hovering over it. So I'm going to take this other line border that we've got here for hovered and put it onto active tab. I then want to make it so I change the style of the button to a hovered style. So if I take my tab button out here and do set style, and then from, oh, from there to make button style, and then I'm going to plug in the hovered style that we've saved it previously and put that in the hovered normal and pressed. And the rest of them I can hide. Compile and save that. So when I activate the tab, we're going to change that appearance like so. Then when I deactivate the tab or make it inactive, make our custom event inactive tab, it'll be this colouring for our underline border. And then it'll be same style stuff going on here, except for the normal will now use the normal variable that we stored. Like so. Okay, so there's our two custom events. And what we want to do is make it so that at the start of the game, we make the first tab button active. So let's go back to our main menu. And go to the graph here and on the construct event. So we're going to go in here and we're going to take out the first button here. And we're going to tell it to be active tab. And plug that in. So there you go, we've got this button here highlighted because it's active. Uh, but if you notice, if I move my mouse over it, it changes the border color here from. Uh, yellow to white. Now the reason why that's happening is because that on hover event is firing off when we don't want it to. So go back to our tab button and look at the unhovered. And we only want to do this if this thing is not the active tab. So we're going to add a verb on here called is active tab, and that would be boolean and compile that. And we're going to drag that in and do a get put that into a branch so it should only do it unhovered if this active tab here is false okay next we want to go over to our active tab and inactive tab for a custom events you're going to drag out that boolean and just set it accordingly so active tab will be set to true and active tab here will be set to false so if i go back to the game now push play I can move my mouse over it and it doesn't actually change on the of, it, of its appearance. These ones will still, okay? But until then, that's it. Okay. So next we need to make it so that when if I were to click on 
different buttons here I'm gonna get the different active tabs but I need to also know which one was my active tab so I ideally I need to make this all handle on the main menu not on the per button basis because each button needs to know who the other button was so let's go to our main menu go to the graph and where we've got that set to active tab here we're also going to promote this to an active tab variable go active tab and plug that in now we've got that in there we can then make the bindings happen for its their on clicked events so if i go to my button here and do the on clicked events for this oh i have to do one at a time and do on tab selected sorry not on clicked there you are um when we do that we want to take the active current active tab here and we'll make this inactive we then need to know what tab we clicked on okay so this one is tab menu button w so that would be this one and we're going to set that to active tab oh just drag that out there it's the same for active tab Okay, then we'll do it for the next one. So this one is W1, so on tab selected. And we'll copy this and just change the references over. So we'll make the inactive tab that one, and then the new tab of active tab will be the T button one. Now, one thing we do have to add on the end of these is this setting active tab. So let's put that on, plug that in. Uh, and the last one here yeah, on tab selected let's copy all of that again and we're going to change this button here this one there we go so if i click on them we should see some change happening so let's go back to the game play click on them that one will now become the active tab and this one will and so on and so forth I can navigate these now with my mouse. So all that's left to do is make it navigate with the shoulder buttons. So we're going to go back to our main menu and we're going to go to the functions list and go to is override and do on key down. And on here we're going to look at two keys in particular, the shoulder buttons. On key event we're going to do get key and from there we're going to do equals and then check it against the right shoulder button and we also want to do it again equals to left shoulder button so let's do the left shoulder button first this will go to a branch and that will tell it to decrease the tab let's make a new function here called decrease tab oh that's a bad spelling decrease tab and then we want another one for increase tab on the key down when that left shoulder is true we're going to call decrease tab and then plug that in I get handled the next one is if this is false and that will go into there and check it against the right shoulder so again that'll be increase tab and we want the same return node i'll put it out handled now if this is false as well we're going to output handled but this time it's going to uh so the return node and output the unhandled pin click out there and do unhandled like so i'll save so let's go to increase tab I'll tell you, actually, now let's do uh, increase tab first. There you go. Increase tab. On increase tab here, we're going to take out a new variable called active tab index. And that'll be an integer that is keeping track of that index. I'm going to take this out and increase it by one. So plus entry one. And then we want to check to see if this is a valid index. Now the way we do that is looking at our tab menu, which is our horizontal box. So we take this out 
And because there's only buttons in there, we're going to do a get children. And do get all children. And look at this array. And on this array here, I'm going to say is valid index and plug in this new number. And what we're going to do is resolve this with a select int. So if this is a valid index, the new number, we want to use that number. So that will go into A for true. It's B, we're going to make it recycle back down to zero. So it goes back to the beginning of the tab menu. If you wanted to clamp it, then you just put in the last number of how many there are, and that would be fine. Then we're going to drag that into our variable, active index. And then you're doing basically what we did on the um, on the on the buttons. If they pick the take the active tab out here and take it to be inactive, and then we need to know which one we want to make active. Remember, they are all stored in this tab menu. Get all children. So if I can uh, get that and put that in, and then from there do get copy, and we're going to get the active tab index and plug that into get copy we then want to take that out and we're going to cast to our tab menu button and we have to tab a cast to it because our tab menu has the functions that we need so I'm just convert that to a pure cast though if I wish that's totally okay um, and then from here we're going to take it to be an active tab And we're going to tell that then to store it as the active tab variable. Now, fortunately, the other one, decrease tab, is pretty much the same. So we're going to copy all of this and go to decrease tab and put that in there. Okay, the only difference is at the start, rather than adding one, we'll be taking away one. So I'll take that out. We take away one, subtract one, okay. but rather than going back down to zero, if we exceed uh, down the other side, we wanted to go to the final index. So from this get all children, just drag out and do last index and plug that into B. Okay, and the rest should take care of itself. So let's see if that works for us. So now I've got these buttons here. And if I do right shoulder button, I'll go across. If I left shoulder button, go across. I can also click on them, jump around and skip. But we now have a tab menu. There we have it. We've now got a tab menu working with our controller, left bumper, and right bumper buttons. In the next episode and final episode, we're going to go through how to link it up to our content so we can switch between different content via the tabs. You can watch that next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Ailey. You can catch that video plus many others from just $1 a month. I also thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. Make sure you subscribe and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.